Welcome along to Amp Next Gen with me, Richard Conway. Welcome along to Amp Next Gen, and we're on episode five. Um, and the guys have sent us through their current audio diaries. Um, first, we'll hear up from Aaron. He's been busy with work and holidays and training and things, so um, we catch up with Aaron. And interesting few weeks he's had. Not finished very well, but uh, he'll tell you all about that. And then we've got Rosalind, and she's just telling us about the progress of her injury and how she's rehabbing and um, drinking lots of red wine because that's a job. So, yeah, hope you enjoy that. And, um, yeah, we'll see you on the other side. Good morning, Rich. So it's been a while. <coughs> I've had a really, really hectic month or so. Um, little one's first birthday, work, uh, and going on holiday. Um, basically, I'm talking to you now, two days after I've just been told that I've uh, fractured a bone in my foot after Manchester Marathon, so... I'm still coming to terms with the fact that I'm now not going to be able to uh, try and qualify for Great Britain for 2023. Uh, my last chance was Clumber Park, which was in a couple of weeks. Uh, my foot definitely won't be ready for that. Uh, but what I will do is I'll uh, I'll talk about the uh, training camp that I went to with Off The Couch Fitness in Lanzarote. Um, it was the fir- first training camp I've been on uh, in a couple of years. Really enjoyed it. Fantastic group of people, fantastic coach. Lanzarote, absolute brilliant. Never been there before to train, been there on holiday, um, but never to train, only to watch the Ironman as well. Um, really, really surprised by how difficult it was. Uh, the first couple of days whilst we were there, the wind was just north to south, and every time we pushed out north towards the island, as a group of 18, 19, 20 of us, all working together, really, really hard. But then coming back was absolutely fantastic. Um, the goal out there was just to keep myself ticking over. Everyone else has um, their own personal goals, which are a lot sooner than mine. One of my uh, good friends of mine is doing Lanzarote Ironman next month. So he was pretty much flying on absolutely everything, which was really good to see. A lot of inspiration. Uh, seeing how far he's come along, knowing that he's going to race the Ironman course in a couple of months as well. So yeah, he really knuckled down and uh, and cracked on. Um, the bike, the bike part of the the week was quite tough for me uh, over the past eighteen months, two years. Not really done any climbing as such. Not really done anything over fifty, sixty miles either. Uh, so the first day we were there, went out and did a sixty mile bike ride and. Got back and I thought, God, this is going to be a long week, this. Uh, really pushed. Worked really hard with the, with the team. Ended up going up to Club La Santa. Brilliant. The sun came out. It was it was fantastic. Lovely to see around that facility. Uh, and then uh, pushed back home as well. But after that first day, I just didn't think I had the legs at all. Um, got up on the second day. We had a, uh, a little out and back. I think it was to a place called Ozil. Uh, and there was a there was a climb in there as well, uh, about twenty miles. The out and back was uh, a total of about forty forty two miles. So yeah, the the climb was bang on halfway. Pushed out again, wind in our face for a good twenty miles. Everyone stayed as a group. Um, stopped off, had a little coffee and a cake, and then uh, pushed ourselves up the climb. Brilliant climb, like I said, I've not done that much climbing for a long time. Um, so I just dug deep, ground it out. Uh, got to the top really, really good. Really enjoyed it. And then it was brilliant. The wind pushed his own. 25, 26, 27 mile an hour. All cruising as a team. Onto some nice roads. A couple of dodgy roads, really. Um, but it was nice to see that the people of Lanzarote just give you loads of space. Uh, appreciate the fact that you're there for um, a training week or just cyclists in general. The amount of room that they give you. Um, amazing couple of days on 
and there was a lot of swimming, some short bursts of running, did a, a, a mountain run, absolutely brutal. Um, but it was good, get to the top of the mountain and um, the views were just, it was half past nine in the morning, views were just spectacular. Um, really, really hard graft, but I feel like my running's come on over the past year, so I was quite happy to do that, and if it's to uh, improve it. Uh, throughout the week, great complex, um, Sands Resort, I believe it was called, and we had a, a gold medalist Paralympian uh, in our little hotel area, Lauren Stedman. Really nice, happy to chat, happy to show us around the bike, absolutely amazing about how she's achieved what she's achieved um, a couple of lads took a real big interest in the bike about how it works um, I'm not sure if many people know um, Lauren only has one hand so um, just the braking and the changing of gears on the bike were explained to us and it's amazing what mechanics technicians designers can come up with to make a an elite athlete, gold medal Olympic athlete as well. But yeah, she was really nice. It came over to speak to us, offered any advice if we if we wanted any. Um, but yeah, like I said, we didn't really want to bother her too much. She was um, on her own training week in Lanzarote also. Um, back onto the swim, really. Not really swam for a, a long period of time as duathlons are, are my go-to at the minute. <laughs> ready for Spain in September. So yeah, it was nice to get in the pool, wear the wetsuit, it gives you loads of buoyancy in the in the outdoor swimming pool, but just to have the coach pick up on a couple of technique issues and then you put that into practice and then towards the end of the week, it, it, it starts to pay off. A couple of friends not 10, 15 seconds off their 100 meter times due to just, just critiquing their uh, technique. Uh, on the run part of it, had a couple of long, um, well, what I'd say, we had one long run um, and then quite a lot of the runs were everything was off the bike. So for me personally, it was quite a lot of biking, but the runs off the bike were very short, sharp and quick. Uh, a couple of the others were doing long rides out and then they were going on a, a 10 mile run. Absolutely brilliant effort from them. Conditions really hot. I think Lanzarote gives you a bit of a a different perspective of oh it's not really that hot because it's really windy but actually um, it was it was brutal when you get off that bike and you've stopped and you feel the heat it soon catches up with you so definitely keeping hydrated keeping on top of your nutrition was really really important during that week loads of food at night carbon up ready for that be ready for that big week. So yeah, um, brilliant week in Lanzarote, really, really pleased that we went, carried on with it and it was just what I think everybody in the group needed as well, to be away from the UK, forget about what's gone on over the past couple of years and all the recent events and just be in our own social bubble, group of friends, not just triathletes, we're all friends, being able to help each other out, help each other on different aspects about how we can improve, one of the lads um like called Adam, he was helping with people helping people with the bike handling skills, just really slowly cycling up to a stationary water bottle, just and getting them to pick it up with one hand whilst they were still cycling. Just so you can get the feel and the technique and how easy it is to be able to manoeuvre the bike. So just little bits and bobs. Really, really interesting. I came home, pretty much rested for four days. Uh, and we have just done Manchester Marathon over this weekend, which would have been the 2nd or 3rd of April. Not done a marathon for three years. The uh, last one I did was London. So my goal for this one was just to do the marathon, go along, stay with uh, stay with Zoe, my partner, just support her. It was her marathon also for three years, but after giving birth last year as well, I think it was um, her first one. She was really, really nervous. Um, Set off on the marathon, brilliant pace, 8.30s, happy with that. We were just happy to take over at that. Got to about 10 miles and I didn't feel great. My foot, something in my foot popped. So, uh, and, and I knew Zoe was struggling at this minute. I could just see it in her face. So, 
I didn't really want to say anything. Uh, just carried on. I had a few little a few little issues with my foot in uh, in Lanzarote. So whether or not I'd just overdone it or not, it it was hard to tell. Um, got to half marathon, thirteen fourteen miles, and uh, had a little meltdown. Um, so I had a little meltdown, so that she couldn't do this, and conditions were tough. Quite windy. There's a long straight in Manchester for about five or six miles, and the wind was just hammering us. Um, had a little word with Zoe. So to calm down, so we we she's been through worse. She can crack on, and get her head down. Um, for the next couple of couple of miles, couple of three miles, it's quite tough keeping her talking. A lot of the crowd was shouting, um, and in the end, we we ended up completing it. Um, I'm not gonna lie, my foot was killing me by the time I'd crossed the uh, crossed the finish line. But a four hour twenty marathon for someone who's not run that distance in three years, and for someone who's given birth a year ago, I think I would, I would take that any day. My first marathon three or four years ago was a 4.15, and I trained for that really well. Uh, just goes to show that if you've got the mental strength to be able to do something, then you are capable of doing it. Even if your body's telling you that you can't do it, it's just proven. From myself and from Zoe, my partner, we were... Um, both struggling. So yeah, that was Manchester done. Had to go and get the foot looked at. Wasn't really happy with it. And uh, it turns out that I've got a stress stress fracture of the second metatarsal on the uh, in my foot. Uh, six to eight weeks out, potentially two weeks with um, a ski boot on, as I call it. Not going to let it decide me. I'm going to get on that bike. Uh, going to take the pedal off the uh, right hand side put my foot on a cushion or something and just work the left leg. Like I say, few events that were I had around the corner, Clumber Park Giraffe on qualifying for 2023. It's in three weeks' time, I'm not going to be fit for that, so I've pulled out of that one. But I'm still going to go support. There's a couple of off-the-couch fitness people doing it. Going to go support the sprint standard. And uh, I'd like to think that if... if, if uh, anything was happened to them and they wanted to come and support them and they'd be there for us as well I'm not going to let it decide me it's, uh, it is what it is it's part of part of life people get injured touch wood I've had no injuries for any serious injuries for four or five years uh, just a matter of time but the big goal September, October um, representing GB in Spain uh, and then doing London Marathon so I've got I've got a bit of time Got a bit of time. Uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. So my updates for this week. Uh, well, there's not been a lot going on the last two weeks. Um, following my crash the other weekend, um, I was incredibly fortunate not to break any bones, um, but there was quite a lot of muscle damage and, and road rash, um, which was quite deep and is still painful. Um, I'm kind of working on a best case scenario um, kind of recovery trajectory that the doctors suggested, which is good. Um, but that's that's been two weeks of of basically nothing. Uh, the first week um, struggled to, was just very very stiff and sore, kind of up through on my back and neck and everything as well. Um, so just took it really really easy. Struggled to sit down. Um, and then the second week, it, it, the pain ease gradually, must, the, the bruising got slightly less intense. Um, and I managed to get to the pool twice uh, just for really, really gentle, easy kind of 40 minutes just pull, um, which was, was <laughs> good mentally as much as anything else to kind of get out and do something. Um, felt like I was going a little bit mad. But I suppose I've just got to be, uh, got to be thankful that it wasn't anything more severe. And it's, I'm, I'm talking weeks, not months. Nutrition wise, um it's probably gone completely the other way as well. Um I uh I suppose as much for I mean, the emotional side of anything. Um not been like comfort eating to the max, but definitely been having more treats than I would normally. Um and this week I'm actually uh, away, I'm travelling for work, uh so I'm in Italy and um believe it or not, it is work, but um I'm spending all day every day 
literally uh, drinking wine and uh, and in, in eating meat and cheese and bread, um, which is wonderful. Uh, it's uh, it's hard work. It's long. There's definitely no no time in the day for um, kind of even even getting out and doing a little walk. It's uh, it's very full on, but it's really good fun. And uh, I think. At the moment, I probably still wouldn't be training. I'm hoping after Easter that I'll be able to to get back. I'll definitely be able to swim again. Um, I'm hoping to get back on the bike. I'll I'll have to take it really steady uh, and and see how I go. I was hoping to get a physio appointment just to get a little bit of kind of professional guidance on how to go back to it so I don't damage uh, muscles. Um, Haven't managed to get one of those until the 6th of May. So that's uh what five five weeks after five and a half six weeks after the uh after the accident so um i'm not quite sure how how you saw that's going to be don't know whether to kind of still go ahead with that um but yeah i'm i'm still still trying to work out whether i need professional guidance or, or something it would be quite useful to know because i just cause i'm not kind of had an injury like this before um which is so specific to kind of glutes and hamstrings which uh, obviously are pretty essential for triathlon an awful lot of wine i suppose um but in the grand scheme of things it, i'm really enjoying it it's you know one of the perks of my job and uh, definitely want to make the most of it here um i'm trying to do some of my plantar fasciitis uh, work um as and when i can i've been working on that the last week especially and um my hope is that as i'm kind of physically able to run from a recovery point of view I'll actually be able to to run because um I'll yeah my feet will have healed um enough to do that plantar fasciitis was something that was kind of ongoing before as well um for the race I think my attitude will be um more to do it and enjoy it I will obviously give it my absolute best shot um but I appreciate that it's a lot less realistic of me having a chance to qualify, but you know I'm I'm still going to do what I can. I'm still going to work as hard as I can, um, as advisable to, and yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm not kind of putting too much pressure on myself from a race point of view because you know these things happen and and you can't do anything about it. Um, just looking forward to getting back out on the bike and and getting out and and doing some training again. Well, that's not good news um, for Aaron. Uh, know how he feels, and so does Roz. She'll know how he feels because we're all in the same boat. We're all injured at the moment, and um, well, that's part of part of it, I guess. We've just got to keep positive and do what we can when we can. Let our bodies recover, and we'll get back to it as as soon as we can. Plans change. Things change. Hopefully catch up with Aaron um, at Clumber Park because I'm also going to go and support with Mrs C because we've got quite a few of our club members there doing various races and formats. So yeah, so we'll be there as well and um, be nice to catch up. By the time the next episode comes out, we'll um, we'll have some good news and they'll be healing and they'll be close to getting back to training uh, and that'll be great. So thank you once again for listening. I hope you enjoyed the update. And if you'd like to get in touch with the Age Group Multisport Podcast, you can drop us an email at agegroupmultisportpodcast at gmail.com or you can follow us on Instagram at amp underscore 1967. You can follow us on Facebook at ampgb. We have our own webpage, which is agegroupmultisportpodcast.buzzsprout.com and you can find all of the podcasts on there you can find us on twitter at age group multisport podcast we have our own youtube channel which is amp gb um and i think that's about it so yeah please get in touch uh, or follow us or drop us a message and if you like what you're hearing you can um, rate this podcast I think Spotify, as I said last time, Spotify are now letting us um, review and rate and follow um, podcasts. So that would be great if you could do that. Um, Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget, stay safe, keep training and love the process.